All right, guys, let's go through chapter one, introduction to fire service and fire, firefighter safety. This is um, our first portion of this chapter. We've got quite a few we've got to go through, but I'm going to pare it down uh, to as little as possible so we don't have to you know, go through every little bit of this. Um, you'll be taking notes along the way, and there should be a question or two that pop up at the end. So you know, we're just making sure we finalize all the information. So our learning objective, number one, explain the mission of the fire service. Um, the mission is really kind of based off of the different, different communities and requirements um, and vary among cities, uh, states, provinces, and regions. But there is really one simple statement when it comes to mission statement. So in other words, LA County has their mission statement. Uh, LA City has their mission statement. Orange County has their mission statement. They all have one thing in common for the United States as far as the fire service is concerned, and that is to save lives and protect property and environment. So those two things are in each and every one of those mission statements is our mission statement as firefighters to first save lives. Number one, most important, save lives to protect property and environment. Those are the things that we're actually protecting um, and watching over. So when we look at the mission statement, no matter who, which department it is, portion of that mission statement will state this. And as a firefighter, this is our mission statement. All hazard concept approach to teaching are to fire protection. Um, community risk uh, reduction. So basically what this is, is education of the public. And obviously in the schools, this is a great place to kind of teach basic fire safety, but we can teach anybody and everybody about fire safety. Our job is fire suppression. Okay, fires uh, start and we're suppressing, putting them out. Technical rescue, when things get kind of strange and don't know how we're going to handle the situation, that's the fire department's job to step up and manage that type of rescue. Um, hazardous materials is something we will deal with. When uh, the uh, opportunity arises, we have the trained professionals to do this. And airport protection, um, which in itself is a totally different type of firefighting. Uh, and so uh, we're, we're prepared for that as well. Fire department mission statement, part of department's rules and regulations has to be there. And it should always be posted somewhere in the facility uh, and uh, available to the community as well, which nowadays is probably gonna be on their website so you can see what their mission statement actually is. Okay, so objective number two, describe how fire departments are organized. Uh, basically, organization of the department depends on a number of different things. The type of the department it actually is, okay, is it a volunteer, fully paid uh, department? Number of locations of facilities, how many uh, stations are there? Uh, the type and number of apparatus, the different uh, types of uh, fire, fire department apparatus that are there that we use, uh, numbers of personnel, organizational heresy, um, minimal training and certification levels and function and responsibilities. Uh, so these are all the things that are going to help us to organize our department. But here's a real simple understanding of what organization looks like. This is the hierarchy or the, um, the chain of command is what it is. Um, and as you can see, typically at the very top of that chain of command is going to be, or the pyramid is going to be the fire, the fire chief. At the very bottom will be the firefighter EMTs and everything in between. Okay. Now, Here's the thing, if the chief has some information that needs to be shared with the rest of the department, it's going to go down this chain till it gets to the bottom. If the person at the bottom here has some information that needs to be shared with, let's say the battalion chief, it should follow this chain to get to the battalion chief. Now, please understand something. This does not mean that when I'm in the station and the assistant chief walks by me, I'm the firefighter EMT, and he, he walks by me, and I have something I would like to share with him. It doesn't mean I can't talk to him. He's a human being, I talk with a gentleman, right? But the fact of the matter is, if I'm on the fire grounds, if I'm in the middle of an actual evolution of job, then I'm going to use this chain of command to actually get my information back and forth, to grab information from the top and for me to give information back to the top. There's a chain in which it should be traveled. This is the chain of command is what we're looking at or the organizational structure. Organizational principles, things that help us uh, that, excuse me, things that, um, that actually help with this uh, organizational structure. Um, the structure itself provides us with the ability to uh, uh, divide labor up properly. Everyone has a job. Everyone has that job and does their job well, so they know what they're, they're doing at that moment. Uh, the chain of command is uh, what we use in this organizational structure to disseminate information. Unity of command, this puts us into the ability to unify certain areas to actually functionally do a job. The truck companies come together. They're going to do roof ventilation. They work together to unify themselves. Span of control, um, where we actually have, and that's important, we're going to talk a little bit more about this, how many people can we manage under one? 
uh, discipline is something we have to have. No matter where you are, there's always got to be discipline in some way, shape, or form. So let's look at chain of command, uh, uh, unity of command. Okay, so in this respect here, we've got emergency responders who are reporting to the captains. Re captains are reporting to the chief. Um, this is how we have that that chain of command, that that uh, communication from the bottom to the top. Again, anybody down here can talk to the chief anytime he walks by. But on the fire grounds, on the job, when the information has to be traveled back and forth, it has to follow this command, this chain, because this is how we make sure everything gets uh, known appropriately all the way through. Same thing, the opposite direction. If the chief has information, he's going to disseminate it to his captains, lieutenants, who are eventually going to bring it down to the crew members. But here's something important. We talk about the span of control, okay? The span of control can only be, uh, um, I can only oversee six people. Once I have seven people below me, I have to add someone else above me, okay? So let's say, let's call these all captains right here, okay? All these captains are overseeing three, uh, three uh, members here, four members here. The moment this crew ends up being seven people, it's going to be split and a new captain's added in. Okay, these become seven or eight people, the crew is split, and another captain's added in. The moment we have seven individuals here, we need to put someone between the chief and them. The military has shown us that if we actually, if we, the optimal number is six, if we go beyond six, information is lost. It doesn't work right. So it's important for us to be aware of the fact that once we have too many people we're overseeing, uh, six being that number, if we get beyond six, then we have to add someone above that to make sure information gets traveled properly, okay? Span of control, the magic number is six. Discipline and division of labor. Discipline itself, organizations, organizations provide leadership. Um, so discipline helps us with leadership. Individual, uh, individual follows orders. Um, if they don't follow orders, they know what's going to happen, right? Rules, regulations, policy define acceptable performance and acceptable outcomes. Um, discipline is not fun, but it's how we learn and it's how we uh, cr uh, create better habits. Uh, divisional layer, divided large groups into smaller groups and necessary to assist responsibility, uh, to assign responsibility and prevent duplication of effort. So um, dividing labor is very important in the fire service. We know what our jobs are and we chunk our jobs into smaller groups who can effectively take care of that job appropriately. Types of fire departments, we have basically two types. We have public and private, okay? Public uh, fire departments are like our LA County, our LA City, Orange County. Private departments work for, or, for entities. Um, you know, Boeing was one of those long time ago, a, a training center, excuse me, not training center, aerospace center. They were so large, they needed their own fire department, you know, uh, uh, people to provide their care, at least until the public, the public uh, department showed up to help out. Um, I think it's Burbank, their movie set theater out there. They have their own fire department on scene. Again, they're not the ones to take care of everything on their own, but they get started while the public actually shows up. So two different types of fire departments we, we have out there. In those two different types of fire departments, we have different types of personnel. We have career, volunteer, or combination. Career is obviously someone who has been hired on full time and is being paid for their job. Volunteer, we all understand. That's just simply somebody volunteering their time uh, into the department to you know function as a firefighter. And this is actually a very important uh, portion of the fire jobs. A combination would be what's referred to as a paid call firefighter. Orange County has these. These individuals do not um, actually collect uh, a paycheck when they're not working. They have a pager, they have a beaver, they have some sort of device that alerts them when there's a call. When that goes off, they respond to the station, jump on the engine, they're paid for that call. When they're done with the call and leaving the station, they're no longer paid. So it's kind of a volunteer career combination of the two. Fits right in that little section right there. Um, obviously, career is what most of us are looking for, and I want to talk volunteer. If you're looking to become a career firefighter, you want to be a volunteer at some point because without this, you're, they're not going to look at you. And obviously, combination is, a, is a, a good way to go about it as well. So our company's operation division, battalion and response district, multiple companies, Apparatus and firefighters, uh, organized based on local needs, specialized on performing multiple tasks. So these are the different types of um, companies that we actually have out there. And here's a list of those companies. We have engine companies. We have truck ladder companies. We have rescue companies, 
brush companies, hazardous materials companies, emergency medical ambulance companies, aircraft rescue and firefighter ARFF companies. So these are the different types of jobs, companies, and we call them companies. The engine is, if you think about La Habra High School, right across the street um, of La Habra Boulevard, you have uh, LA County 191. What comes out of the station is an engine, okay? It's a fire engine. Um, it is not a truck, okay? The truck is completely different. So this is a company. Those guys that come out of there, they're an engine company. And then you have the ladder company. That's out of station 15 for us over in La Mirada. Uh, it's the big truck with the uh, the independent back end. It's a tiller truck. Um, and they all have their own jobs, the performance. These guys can handle uh, fighting fire, putting out fire. And these guys can too. But on a real fire, these guys are doing the interior attack. These guys are doing the ventilation above. They're actually breaking the roof and getting in and uh, letting all the heat out. So we all have our different tasks that we actually perform. Obviously, brush company is a, a crew that goes out and works on brush fires like we currently have going on around us now. Um, so that would be different than the engine company. Classifications of fire department personnel, career and volunteer, like we just talked about. We have line and staff personnel. The line personnel, the people on the engines, actually on the trucks, actually doing the job fighting fire. We have the staff personnel, which could be more of the, the chief, the battalion chiefs, the lieutenants, also uh, administration and staff as far as secretary and all that type of stuff. So there's a lot of different jobs and even more than just that. There's a lot of different jobs out there that are related to um, the fire service altogether. Um, different areas we can actually work in okay so that's the first lecture guys uh like i said uh you're taking notes while you went through this hopefully they are there you can always go back and go through whatever you need to go through to finish up those notes submit them to me and be looking for those a uh, couple of questions that pop up just kind of uh solidify what we just went through okay thank you very much for your time take it easy guys bye